Hi everyone, this is Freddie with Superbike Unlimited and today we're here at Hunter Power Sports in Hendersonville, North Carolina. And uh, it's because we're about to begin another Superbike build, which seems crazy because we're obviously right in the middle of our Ducati V4R build. And uh, you're probably thinking, why would you do that? Well, because that's what we do when we're crazy. And uh, of course, you guys know that we have another really uh, proper Superbike at the shop in the Kawasaki ZX10RR. And uh, there's a new one that's out and naturally it just doesn't make sense for us to keep doing this stuff with the old bike so without further ado this is going to be our brand new SBU Superbike project this is a, a 2021 Kawasaki ZX10 double R that we got from Hunter Power Sports and uh, we're going to give it the full SBU treatment and build it to the spec that you guys are used to so first thing we're going to do is get this back to the shop and uh, we'll pick up there Okay, so we're back at the shop and we're gonna just look at a couple of things on the bike right away that are that are apparently different from the previous generation. Obviously the aesthetic stuff is completely different. We'll just do a quick walk around. You can see that now the tail section kind of has these little uh, sort of winglets in it. You can sort of see right through. Yeah, it's uh, an improved aero package apparently. And of course the front end is radically different. Kind of a polarizing new front fairing. Some people love it, some people hate it. I think it looks pretty nice from the side. Um, and then onto some stuff that's, uh, and of course, obviously we'll, we'll point out, it's got a brand new display that's not as antiquated as the old one. Naturally, some of this stuff doesn't really matter for us because we're gonna build this into a super bike, but a couple of things that are relevant is the, uh, the bike now has an e-throttle, so that just means that there are no longer, this is just a sensor here. There are no longer cables running from this uh, down to a, a servo. So this is essentially, this is just a throttle sensor. That's completely different. And something else that we noticed that's really nice is now there is an actual oil cooler. So uh, that really should help with uh, maintaining oil temperature and in general, just keeping this thing cool. Um, that's just a big change because we haven't seen that on previous generations. It's always just had uh, a water cooler there. So we normally just put a big one. So for us, what we're gonna do, um, we'll break the bike in a bit. We'll do some pulls in 100% stock trim just to see what it does on our dyno and, and a standard configuration. And then of course, we're gonna begin the process of converting it into an SBK. We're actually servicing our 2019 uh, motorcycle right now. You can see it over here. We're just gonna freshen everything up. We're not sure yet if we're gonna keep this as like a backup bike um, or if we're gonna put it all back together and sell it. But uh, more on that later. Um, for now, we're just gonna break this guy in. We're gonna run it on the dyno. Then we're literally just gonna tear everything down, put all of our SBK goodies on it. For now, I don't even, we haven't ordered any engine parts for it yet. So that's something we're gonna first just see how much power it makes with a proper Motec ECU and tune on it. A proper exhaust and air filter and potentially velocity stacks that's something we'll dig into later we'll see how much power it makes and then we'll get all of our kit engine parts and uh, and really squeeze it a bit so that's coming up okay so what we're going to be going over before we weigh this bike in is the differences between the 2021 and the 2019 or 2020 which is what we've had previously and i'd like to point out these are just the differences that we personally know of there may be other ones and if we find out anything else we'll be sure to update this but for now there are some pretty key differences um so we'll get right to it uh first and foremost the gearbox is actually has completely different gear ratios from the previous generation zx10 and uh what i mean by that we've made a little a little rundown but essentially the the input gear and first gear are the same but on the new bike gears two through six are actually longer. So that's gonna make a pretty big difference in the way the bike actually rides on the racetrack. Also, the final drive is different. On the ZX-10 RR, we have uh, 1741 uh, sprockets. The previous generation was 1739. I think the base model ZX-10 has 1737. I'm not really sure why they did that, but something to, to point out. So I've got a list here. We'll go over some of the other stuff. The, the bike is supposed to have a new set of Pankle rods versus the old generation that's slightly lighter. Uh, it now has Pankle pistons, and I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, new valve springs, new camshafts. This is, the camshafts are apparently only new for the double R uh, engine, at least that's the thing that I read. Um, so that's uh, gonna be a notable change. More revs, we don't really know what we're capable of just yet. 
Our old engine, we were already revving it considerably higher than standard. This one, we expect to be able to rev to at least 15,000, maybe a bit higher. So we'll see about that later. Um, obviously, it does have an electronic throttle. We already touched on that. There's no throttle cables at the grip anymore. It's got the same setup as the new R1 and the Ducati V4. Um, integrated winglets. We've talked about that, obviously. The new, the new fairing is for aero purposes. It has downforce. That's what those are, is essentially winglets at the front and the rear. Um, updated chassis geometry. So that's something that uh, we had heard about. We've got a little bit of information on that. We don't have everything yet. So we're going to probably have to do some measuring and, and, and wait until there's a little more information that's readily available. One thing is that the triple clamps, the previous clamp had a 26 millimeter offset. The new clamp has a 28 millimeter offset. What that's going to do is decrease the trail and make the bike feel more nimble or flickable. So it's going to make it steer lighter and faster. Also, the swing arm is now eight millimeters longer. So that's one of those things. Generally in Superbike, we see the bikes, they're kind of getting longer and longer. It's probably just to make this bike more competitive as a super stock bike. Sorry about that. I got a phone call in the middle of that. Um, it's a Monday, so it's difficult to get these done. But yeah, that's that's the main stuff that we're aware of so far. The uh, the swing arm is stiffer. And also, the um, of course, it has that air to oil cooler now, which I think is going to be a really big upgrade. Unfortunately, it means our old radiator stuff's not going to work on this new bike, but it'll be interesting to see how the cooling is without that right away with just this new setup. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put this on the scales and see how much it weighs uh, in the trim that it's in now. And uh, uh, from there, we're going to begin the break-in process of this thing. And we'll probably have for the next video, show you some dyno pulls after it's just broken in and fully standard trim. Something else we're going to go ahead and go over is just show you what the new dash looks like. We might as well enjoy this while we can, because of course, on our bike, we're gonna be replacing this. So first of all, this is uh, one of the layouts available on the dash and you can press the reset button one time and it changes it from a dark mode to a light mode. So that kind of shows you what that looks like. And then if you hold the select button on the right handlebar right here, uh, and then this is your reset button here. This is what lets you change it from light to dark. If you hold the button on the right hand side, you can get into the menu and, and change and view all your other settings. So there is a, another base setting for the display. Here you can see that. That's type one that we're on now, which is the default. Type two is the other option. So we'll just show you what that looks like. Okay, so that's type two. A little more information, potentially. And that's the light mode for it. I think the dark mode looks a little bit nicer, but um, you can also hold those reset buttons to, to reset some of the values that it shows on here, lap time and lean angle, left and right, and that kind of thing. Um, those had some arbitrary values from us just moving the bike around. Um, that menu is also where you're going to change your shift light and things like that, and also some of your rider aids. You can see Here we go. You can see this is where you change all of your rider mode settings. And a lot of this stuff is turned off. So like the quick shifting and um, launch control, rider mode, all that stuff was disabled on ours out of the box. I don't know if that's standard, but just something to point out if your bike's not, not working the way you expect. It could be that that stuff's all turned off. Okay, so next we'll do the weigh-in and we'll uh, see how it stacks up compared to the old one. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and see how much this bike weighs. It doesn't have a lot of fuel in it, so you know, keep that in mind. There's probably gonna be 15 pounds or so that are unaccounted for. You want me to hold something? Yeah, put your foot in front of that if you don't mind. All right. Real little We on? Okay. Got it pretty well centered. It looks like 443. Certainly not a featherweight. 444. We'll go with 444 since that's heavier. Gives us a good starting point. But uh, yeah, it gives us an idea of the... Uh, is there a way for us to... Where's the... I thought there was a way to show the bias percentage. Hmm. Yeah, we should probably learn how to use this. Okay, so here we go with the center of gravity. So it looks like we're about a 52.6, 52 and a half front bias. 
So that gives you a reference. And I think that's gonna do it for this one. Uh, next video, we'll get it on the dyno. We'll do a break in and we'll see how much this thing makes in fully stock trim before we do our transformation into full spec Superbike. Thanks for watching.